Hello, and welcome back to yet another Retro Channel. This is a follow-up video on yesterday's video regarding this, the EEPROM PLA replacement uh, project. I got a lot of support from the community, and by support from the community, I kind of mean they told me I was suffering from a rectal cranial inversion, meaning I had my head up my, well, you get the idea. Um, so I've done more research and uh, done more analysis, and I wanted to get back to you so that, uh, that you would understand that uh, I'm not trying to push something here that doesn't work. Um, what I've concluded, uh, I'll, I'll get to, to, to the analysis uh, in a moment, but uh, my conclusion is that this, while it does seem to work, I would no longer call it a viable long-term solution for a PLA replacement. Um, I was contacted by Captain Commodore, who I mentioned in the previous video and who I, whose videos I linked to. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you've seen any of his videos, you, you know he's a blunt individual, and he didn't, uh, he didn't hold back in telling me that, uh, uh, that my conclusions were way off. Um, and he suggested looking at a document that I already knew about from his videos um, called the, the PLA Dissected. Um, it's a PDF document, it's available on the web, and I will link to it in the description of this video. Uh, but that document goes in great detail as to how the PLA works. Um, it, it analyzes uh, several of the PLA revisions that were released over the years, along with a couple of um, PLA replacements. Three, I think, an EEPROM PLA replacement, the Super PLA, and uh, one other. I forget which. But anyway, you can look at that document yourself. It's, it's pretty technical, so um, I'd have a cup of coffee with you when you try to read it. Um, but the long and the short of it is that a solution like this... Um, the timings are not going to be precise enough to avoid bus contention. Um, the slew rate of the transitions on the output pins um, needs to be very well controlled and uh, within a very, uh, uh, very precise uh, timing. Um, there's also apparently some built-in delay on some of the outputs uh, intentionally to uh, allow things to clear bef before the next chip is selected. Um, and this just is not going to do all of that. Um, <clears throat> as a result, if you have bus contentions, first, you're, you know, obviously you can get bus conflicts and the machine might not uh, work properly, uh, but probably more importantly, the bus contention will uh, increase your uh, power dissipation, it will cause extra heat, it will um, <clears throat> possibly shorten the lifespan of some of your other ICs. Um, so for this reason, this solution doesn't meet the criteria. I'm sorry to say that because I really was um, pretty excited about it when I when I first found it. Turns out, though, this is not a new thing. This uh, this debate about whether to be able to use EEPROMs or EEPROMs or, or whatever as a solution for a PLA replacement, this uh, debate's been going on for years. I'm very late to the uh, to the party on this one, so. People, people have done a lot more research than me, and they have figured out that this isn't going to work. So 
<clears throat> let's take a look real quick at, at some of the criteria that, I, that, that you want to take into account when you're looking for a PLA replacement. I'm going to look at um, an original uh, 906114-01 true PLA. That's the first one I'm going to look at. I'm also going to look at one of the GAL PLAs. And I'm going to look at the EEPROM. Um, and what I'm going to look at specifically is I'm going to look at CASRAM. CASRAM is an output signal um, that when it goes low, it means that something is trying to access the RAM. CAS, the signal, one of the signals that triggers it, um, it's on a pretty regular, it pretty regularly uh, goes low. However, the PLA masks uh, some of those and only has, uh, only drops CASRAM low uh, under certain conditions. So that is, that one in particular is very sensitive to its timing, um, as I understand it. And it's going to be an easy place to see some of these differences. So you go ahead and lock this. This is, again, the original C64 PLA, the 906114-01. Uh, this was made in the 44th week of 1983. If you read the PLA dissected document, you'll find that through the life of this PLA, um, it had several, two or three, revisions of the actual in uh, the, the guts. Um, so knowing what week it was made can kind of give you an indication of maybe which version of the guts, if, you, if you're interested in that. Um, uh, 83 is the year that things changed over though, so you don't know for sure if this was an old one or a new one, older one or a newer one. Um, 44th week indicates it's probably later in the cycle, so it's probably one of the, the newer of the two revisions from 83. Anyway, doesn't matter. What we're going to do is take a look at CASRAM. And CASRAM is on pin 18. So when I start this up, what you're looking at in the O-scope is the rising transition. This is the transition that turns off CASRAM. And as you can see, the transition... Uh, from zero up to, well, four, uh, what, one, two, three, four and a half volts, um, crosses the TTL threshold pretty quickly uh, from zero to floating, and then it takes a little longer to get from, uh, or yeah, from zero to floating, and it takes a little longer to get from floating to one. But it's a pretty smooth transition, and if we look at the Falling transition, again, it's a pretty smooth transition. Um, and these both happen in about 20, uh, 20 nanoseconds time uh, to get almost the full transition. And to pass the threshold, it's usually less than 10 nanoseconds. So that's what a proper real PLA should look like on the CASRAM. Now, If I change out for the GAL PLA, because of um, pin reassignment here, the CASRAM signal on the GAL PLA is here on pin, um, pin 15. Oh. Yeah, pin 15 of the right gal. And you can see the uh, falling transition is very smooth, very quick, and uh, very stable. And if we look at the rising transition, 
it's a little slower because it's it's powering up rather than powering down um, but it's still very smooth very quick through the transition point or through yeah through the uh, trigger point um, So it should be, assuming you have a working um, GAL PLA, which if you, again, if you watch Captain Commodore's uh, videos, there are some issues with some of these uh, not necessarily working. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave the, the ex explanation of that up to him. I'm not going to get into it. But if you have a working GAL PLA, it, it seems to be a very smooth, very even transition. Now show you where the problem or one of the problems with the EEPROM lies. If we take a look and now we're back on pin 18 again, if we take a look at and we're going to see first the rising transition on the, on the CASRAM. As you can see when it's doing its best it seems to be a pretty smooth, pretty stable transition, but those flickers you're seeing, uh, those, and I've programmed two EEPROMs just to see if it was an e issue, issue with, a, with an EEPROM, but that flickering, let me try to get one, uh, a single shot here, if I can. Yeah, that kind of transition is not gonna work. Um, that is likely to leave <clears throat> the target chips selected for too long, in which case they're, you're going to get bu uh, bus contention. This is not the only issue with this. This is not the only reason for bus contention. Uh, other timing, as I said, I said, I believe there's a delay built in to, uh, to the uh, original PLA that the uh, on on EEPROM all the outputs are going to behave the same way in the original PLA as I understand it I'm 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 passing on secondhand thirdhand knowledge here so forgive me if I get any of this wrong but CASRAM in particular the way it's uh, the way it's configured internally to the PLA. Um, there's circuitry that's necessary for the signal that also uh, adds propagation delay through the circuit. And the C64 is actually designed to take advantage of that specific delay. So the EEPROM is never going to do that. It's going to output each uh, result as quickly as it can, um, just reading it out of its memory. So uh, among, or, or, you know, when, when you put all these issues together, as I said, I no longer think this is a viable long-term solution. It may work temporarily. Uh, if you happen to have some of these around and your C64, your PLA dies, and you absolutely need to keep using it while you're waiting for a replacement part, that you've ordered, you can throw one of these together. You can use your Commodore for a short period. Um, I would not recommend any more using this long term. I had hoped I was wrong uh, when I started getting the comments from Earth. I'd hoped that the that the uh, the community was wrong, honestly, when I started getting those comments. But the community was absolutely right. Um, Another thing I should mention uh, to follow up on my first video, uh, I programmed the Super Zaxxon cartridge onto my Easy Flash, assuming that that would um, give the PLA the stress test that it is under uh, on that game. And I was uh, quickly informed, in particular by Captain Commodore, but others as well, that doing that. The version of the uh, Super Zaxxon that you can put on the Easy Flash doesn't do what the original Super Zaxxon cartridge did. This that's so stressed and, and so hammered 
the PLA. So that test when I did it was completely invalid. Um, and the other test, the Ghostbusters, uh, according to Captain Commodore, uh, that error was specific to the GAL PLAs that he's been having problems with. So probably would never would never have uh, affected the the uh, EEPROM PLA that I was working with anyway. So those two tests were useless. Um, the the C64 diagnostics, of course, they are as useful as they have ever been, which is to say marginally. Um, we know that both the dead test and the diagnostics cartridge don't always get everything right. Um, so you, you take those with a grain of salt. Um, what you need to do to analyze a part like this is, is uh, what many others have done before me and much better than I have. And uh, what I, a little bit of what I showed you just now is looking at the signals in great detail, uh, looking at the timings in great detail, and uh, analyzing their effect on the other chips. I, I, I did a little bit of temperature testing on, uh, on the other ICs uh, during operation to see if there was any measurable difference. Uh, in temperatures based on heat and uh, power dissipation changes between the original PLA, the, the GAL PLA, and the EEPROM PLA. I, with the crappy little thermometer I've got, I couldn't really tell a difference. So uh, I'm not, I guess I'm not the person to, uh, to figure that out. But long and the short of it is I wanted to put this video together today to clear up the misconceptions that I created um, and to give you folks better information and a better answer as to the viability of the, the EEPROM PLA as a solution. Like I said, not a long-term solution, not long-term viable. Temporary, maybe, not long-term, not to leave in your daily driver uh, certainly not to put in any machines that you're repairing and, and, and passing on to others, either selling or giving away. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that to them. You, you are going to cause them, you're probably going to cause them problems down the line. So that being said, uh, again, I apologize for being so enthusiastic about this yesterday. And I will try to do better in the future. Um, be a little more critical and a little more analytical in my approach. Um, and again, thank you to the community who stepped up and uh, showed me where I'd taken missteps. And uh, thank you to those, who, again, that have gone before me and done all this research um, that the C64 or the, the PLA uh, dissected document is wonderfully in depth and the, and the authors uh, did a great deal of research and a great deal of analysis and have provided folks like me the stepping stones to to go forward uh, and I, I appreciate that so um, if you like this video <laughs> uh, you can give it a like if you want um, that will help me out if you appreciate my content, um, please feel free to subscribe and, and click that notification bell. And uh, I will be talking to you soon, everybody. Have a nice day and uh, be safe, be well, be healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.